what's going on y'all it's jay Smo reviews here back at it again with another video man listen i've been having these five day spaces between videos y'all know i complain about it every time i don't like it i like to post every other day and all that but as y'all can see man big reason for that was i was on the champion of the year 2023 panel I was doing a lot of last second work was getting a lot of last things in order and just taking time rather than on the channel taking time to do the job right man it is the biggest honor that i have uh, i want to start off by thanking jay black as always giving me the opportunity to, to be up there I, I, I take it very, very seriously, and by anything, uh, not only do I want to do good by him, I want to do good by the battlers and do good by you guys. For me, I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a tool of trying to get a better list, a, a better whatever we can do. Um, that's always going to be my end goal at the end of the day. So thank you, Black, for giving me the opportunity, and in my opinion, doing that pretty good, man. Happy with the way this uh, list turned out this year. Um, smaller panel, right? It was five of us for the most part. Also want to say shout out to my guy Tito, uh, KMF man. Um, shout out to Chilla Jones, obviously legend, and shout out to my god Mark, Mr. Shake the Building. Thought all of us had great contributions to the panel. Very orderly debate. Obviously, it was down in time from other years, man. Um, obviously, we're looking a lot of times eight battle year, uh, eight hour type of debates last year, ten hour type of debates, bigger panels. That's necessary too sometimes, man. Sometimes it takes that long to get down to the detail. Um, but this year we're looking more four, four and a half hours, trying to make it a more watchable experience for you guys. So hopefully the flow of the conversation was a bit better, maybe less of the points missed out um i'm not seeing too many huge snubs or things like that obviously when it comes to a cody list there's always going to be some type of complaint and there's definitely a few that are i've seen more than others but i'm proud to say you know not too much uh too much controversy this year too many spots i think that goes to show there was five guys that really locked in really watched about as much battle rap as it is humanly possible and try to show respect for all years obviously um the categories are great too but we gave more holistic views right we didn't just shoot right to the categories on each one although i'll show you my own personal 20 i walked in with and how i had it category checked and obviously we still used them up there but you know that was just my little overview hope that the product and the watchability was a little bit better this year um um, and and I'm, I'm hoping that you all really like the list and that we did uh, good by the battlers and everybody's opinion. Um, but without further ado, just want to hop into my own personal list and a couple of the main takeaways I'm seeing from our top 20. So first thing I wanted to start off uh, by showing is my personal top 20 list, which I should have popping up uh, somewhere around here. Um, and as you can see, it's not very much different from what we have on the list at all, especially with the names given. Uh, obviously, um, I, I, towards the bottom, it's a little bit different as it's going to be. I had Swamp at 20, a name I mentioned up there, but knew there could be some fringe case to it. Love the Swamp versus Jeff Trez battle, but I said it many times, and I'm going to say it again. Uh, I think Swamp is a top 10 to 15 battle rapper in the world right now. I think he is that great, but I think he may have not had a top 10 to 15 year uh, obviously and ended up not being a top 20 year but definitely worth mentioning and then obviously ace i mean someone that got bumped off might be a shocker to some of you to see him above marv kind of said it on the panel i was convinced to go fully marv over him um just when i heard some of the debates for it marv battling uh, i believe it was three times in eight days or something like that incredible feat but i think ace's first five battles get underrated i get it a couple bad interviews couple losses at the end of the year um and i understand the public perception against them but if you look at it i'm telling you had some good work to start the year but the way he ended it had no problem with him ended up missing the list um no ek here but then he ends up making it someone that i had in my honorable mentions right and then for the most part coffee mike Fonz, john john even a lot of them are in the in the same stands as where they ended up on the list um had real sick a little bit lower ended up finishing higher right into the top eight um, and I didn't see too many people giving that pushback. So maybe that was me really underrating um, his strength of schedule a bit going in and maybe his impact because clearly rapping wise, he is rapping of a very, very elite level. And then he's got performances like the A-word performance. Um, I don't consider disaster crazy high in strength of schedule, but to do what he did disaster in that fashion on SM, plenty of good reasons that he can make it this high up in the list. So got to give credit where it's due for sick, finished a little bit higher than I expected. Um, A-word still feel pretty good about where he finished as you can see here i did have jazz higher than him so i guess it's the only big swap that you make here um and listen it's a, it's a close case i do feel like 
there's there's obviously pros to Jazz's case. I think her getting put in the Cody convo is just because of kind of like a, a, a series of events, right? You get nitty, wow, big battle, and you get twerked, and you get K, and that ends up being three of the top five, so naturally the convo comes along, but I still stand by what I said. She did good, but I don't know if the results were great enough for her to be in a higher level of the conversation. Still would have voted her over A-Word like I did on the panel, but so, so close, and A-Word is a category monster, even with the losses that he had this year. At the end of the day, when it came down to it, he won not just moment of the year, he won the runner-up. He won the two moments of the year. That's all his. Um, him and Verb uh, ended up being on our kind of pie chart, um, which you guys don't get to see, but the, the percentages for battle of the year, him and Verb was high up in that combo. although shout out to Hitman and Ill Will. I think we made, uh, not we, I think the fans made the right decision in voting that uh, battle of the year. So that's kind of wraps up everything going into the top 10. And then uh, something that I see here, same way it is on my list, uh, on my list is Tay Rock at seven. And I see a lot of pushback for that. And I think that's just because the more I got to talk to some battlers this morning, shout out Cheat Happens, shout out Klutz, um, shout out talking to Hansel last night, uh, Gichi Gotti, Twerk, you know what I'm saying? All, all very good feedback. Um, and for the most part, it seems like it's just that we know how great Rock is and the work that he puts into this culture that people feel like even when he's great, it gets undermined or it just gets considered as the normal. We've heard this in place for a few different battle rappers, right? A, a Danny Myers, a Rum Nidhi, and I completely agree on that note. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of placement here, I think that they make the extraordinary look normal and it's not normal. So they don't get the credit for being extraordinary every time. But when it comes down to the logistics of it a bit here, um, I think Rocket 7 is the perfect placement for him. Not gonna lie. And I think that you could, and listen, it's an argumentative thing. It's how you spin it. I could see a way that he's over easy or nitty. So if, if you really want to go and argue that, maybe someone will give me a good debate for it. But for me personally, um, particularly easy, someone that ended up being at six right over him. I, I believe I had nitty the lowest voted on the panel at six. So people seemed a little safer putting nitty up. Um, but with easy, I had him four two in categories over rock. I had him taking impact performance, strength of schedule, and moments. Impact and moments can go hand in hand. We know Easy's impact on 2023. Um, and then obviously when it comes to performance, big stage, Hitman Hollow thought that though that's a, a higher ring performance, especially using performance in terms of uh, the actual aspect, maybe more than you saw with Av and Rock or maybe even uh, Miss Hustle versus Tay Rock. I just thought Easy had just, even if it came to the tied categories, just thought his peaks matched a little bit more throughout the year. The hit, the John John battle and the Hitman battle being maybe a better achievement, higher achievement. Um, I think the point is that I made uh, then over Tay Rock's best battle. But a lot of this also comes down to not only Tay Rock, uh, they talked about his appreciation, but strength of schedule people bring up. And listen, Tay Rock really has battled everyone. And I think that there's also this sense that, oh, Rock has been great so long and he's not going to have, uh, he hasn't gotten these Cody accolades yet or, the, or it's overlooked. And it is tough because I will say, listen, uh, pre-Cody, there's very few years that are people's years. So if there was a Cody in 2015, there's no question it would be in Tay Rock's hands. He was easily the best battle rapper in the world. There's a good chance he goes and repeats in 2016. So it, it seems like almost at the, not the tail end because he was there for 2017, gets second place, had a good case. It got a uh, runner up last year too, right? But it, there would easily be belts there. And for me, Tay Rock isn't someone that's defined by that whatsoever. Is that why? Uh, do I use that in my logic at all when I put him here? Absolutely not. But it just goes to say, hey, listen, I think he's very fairly seven this year, but I also think in the grand scheme of things he's the greatest battle rapper that i ever watched so completely understand you i'm saying his frustration as a competitor um and fans arguing for their guy just wanted to say stand by that seven pick i think that's the thing i've seen get maybe the most pushback and i think a big reason for that is just how much we all really fucking love tay rock and i'm and i'm fully with you guys on that that's why when i see any of the pushback for it any of the this and that or we fucked that up i'm not about to throw my hands up with y'all you know what i'm saying like i got i got my debate to get my counterpoints back but i fully understand you know what i'm saying the message that y'all are giving there but for the most part not too much else here that I saw any any pushback for. A couple people said easy to be higher. It's easy. We're always going to have people saying that, right? Um, Chef Trez at three, I think that was very, very well deserved. When I came into the panel, I can tell you guys that was definitely the one where I'm like, all right, I, I will fight this one to the death. I would have argued an extra hour if there was a big um, hold up for Chef Trez at three because I just valued his year that much. And I think he's a perfect example of 
when impact and just not being all up in front of the camera, right? All, all interviews and all types of controversial shit. He didn't have any of that. So it's easy to just overlook if that's what you get caught up in is the new cycle of battle rap. But just the raps were that fucking good, man. I mean, it's, it's just you go back and watch Jeff Tres's footage. Swamp, show off, twerk. John John, clone, etc. It's it's all really as good as advertised. But for the most part, last thing I wanted to say, Big K and Twerk. Obviously, in my opinion, the closest, closest um race in Cody history when you really broke it down. It was proven that way. Three of us voted for um K, two of us voted for Twerk, came down to the fan vote winning no matter what, and that was decided by 3%, 39 to 36%, which came down to about five to seven people, man. If, if seven or eight of you guys that really wanted Twerk just went on there and voted, Twerk would be your champion of the year right now. And even if my vote was flipped due to the fan vote, Big K would have won either way just by securing um, two votes in the room. So super, super close. I think both of them are very deserving. Uh, and I'll say right now, for me, that came down to a category split. Kind of the tough part of having six uh, categories, the criteria. And I ended up giving Twerk strength of schedule, performance, and moments. I gave Big K material, consistency, and impact. Um, and, and listen, even some of those are debated, right? The schedule could go either way. Impact could go either way. Material, all the debate that there would be uh, that I've already had many times for that. Uh, but as I said in the panel, biggest thing for me, Blue Room really took over in 2023. And when I think about who was the key part to that, there is guys like Will and Hitman that played a part, but to me, K is the reason. I mean, shit, they called him what is the Blue Room Goon, right? Was that was a was a big part of that in those performances, but super duper duper close. I think it could go either way. I'm sure there will be debates going on forever about it. I'm not mad at anyone that had twerk, but at the end of the day, guys, in this big culture that we have, all the numbers and names, right? It came down to like seven people. It came down to seven everyday fans that ended up deciding it. And I just want to say congrats to Twerk on his fantastic year. And congrats to Big K, obviously, winning champion of the year. And that is my full little spiel here, man. I didn't want to keep you all too long. Just give, like I said, I'm, I'm very happy to see that, you know, we, we did good to the point. There's not too much like, oh, this definitely shouldn't be here. This definitely shouldn't be here. Listen, every list is going to get pushed back. But for the most part, you know what I'm saying? I feel the love. I feel like there's been good reception. And any battlers that have critiqued us, I saw John John said some things. Um couple other battlers obviously they talked to Geechee and some stuff like that even if there was questions posed I thought they were, they were all respectful I think they're all good dialogue talking points and it seems like everyone is giving a lot of respect uh, to the full list this year and just the last thing that I want to say and I've said it, uh, like I said here I've been talking Cody a lot right so I've said a few of these things a few times but the, uh, they'll always ask right who are these guys on the panel for the most part and I can say for myself man I've been doing the media thing for about two years they always say what are your credentials LTBR picked me up and that was nothing off of me just being in rooms giving my takes then coming on this channel and just reviewing what I could whether whether you know what I'm saying however many people are watching whatever it is it's just like talking battle rap and my work's been appreciated like that of a of a Jay Black and a Let's Talk Battle Rap in France and thankful for the opportunities they've given me also meeting battlers going to tons of events being outside um, I, I've gotten to witness a lot of the culture so I could say for me I'd like to think I do a little bit more uh, than the average just casual fan uh, around here and I'm someone that watches battles not once not twice probably three times I, I do take this position seriously but also when it comes to more battlers more media being on the panels more representation listen people are invited man at the end of the day in a perfect world maybe maybe there isn't uh me and tito were up there just because there's there is a more battle rappers well-named battle rappers like how we had a chilla a, a dna a geechee Gotti, right something like that on the panel and other media greats that should be up there like a three letterman um that clearly knows his way around the game so all it comes down to is a matter of people watching the battles and people accepting the position, right? Because as much as I would love any uh, any of them to be up there, Tone Bro, right, who's been up there many a time, someone I look up to in this uh, in this media field. At the end of the day, when people can't make it, someone's got to take the job, man. If battlers turn it down and some other high-ranking media in other places turn down the opportunity or can't make it, they ask who we are. We are the guys that do the work. We're the guys that are going to show up and do the job uh, when other people can't. So. For the most part, man, proud to be a part of this culture, uh, proud to be a part of it, would love to be a part of every Cody panel if, uh, if I'm had going forward, but would love to get up there and debate with some more battlers if given the chance, and if necessary, a battler taking my spot with that type of uh, view on the game and perspective, that would be healthy for the culture as well. But it's been Jay Small Reviews again, y'all. Uh, thank y'all for the love and hope that we did good by y'all, Cody 2023. Congratulations to Big K one more time, man. I'm gonna catch you on the next one, man. Peace.